Welcome one, welcome all, welcome to another episode of this game, Cataclysm, A Second World War. This solitaire playthrough, I'm on turn number six of seven. We're almost done here, but let's see how it concludes. Right now, the fascists are up, uh, let's see, a solid... 27 to 4 to negative 2, but that can all change in an instant if one of these fascist powers falls. It can be uh, like if Germany falls, they lose their 10 points, but they also count as negative 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 points. So it's a 16-point swing if Germany falls. That's a big reduction. Um, actually, 16 points negative for Germany plus a few for the Allies. Anyway... The Soviets are actually looking in a very strong position here. You can see their force pool is almost empty. They've got almost everything on the map. They picked up an extra resource for this production phase that they did not have last turn. They held on to the Romanian resource they had last turn. They're low in VP, but at this point, they have so many things on the board, they could probably pull pure offensives, get all eight of their offensives on the map, and be in very good shape. So let's jump into the production sequence, shall we? Germany's going to grab two flags. And then Italy's going to get their one flag. The Japanese are going to get their one flag. Stability-wise, everybody's hurting except the Soviets. That's very bad for everybody else. The Soviets are... N you know what? The, the, the odds are in their favor to take this flag. They've got a 70% chance of passing it. And if they do fail in that 30% chance, they've got another 30% chance to use the flag to get themselves back up. In addition... They're in pretty good situation to, like, grab East Prussia or Korea. Maybe not Korea yet, but maybe later, in order to grab an extra flag as needed. So I think they're going to take the take the risk here. Oh, they do have one in the production holding box, so I think they're okay. Here's the uh, stability test they will take in order to take the flag. They pass it. Remember, they get the flag regardless. Passing the stability test uh, or failing it is not affecting whether they get the flag or not. It's just whether they got the... Uh, the penalty or not. Let's see. Okay, the allies each get a flag here. Boom, boom. And now we have to see about production. Italy is completely maxed out. They get one free war offensive, and then they get one production for Lombardy. They didn't take any other production, so they're just going to take another offensive. And that is like the strongest Italy gets when they can grab two offensives with their force pool fully built out. I don't know if they're going to go to total war this turn, that's so dangerous for Italy to do. We'll make that decision later. Next, we go up to the Soviet Union. The Soviet Union has... Are these any, any offensives here? No, they should have all... Actually, they have only seven. One of them is over here on the, um, on the influence for China. And you're allowed to pull back these aid markers whenever you want. And the Soviet Union is absolutely probably going to do that. Actually, no, they're only getting six resources, aren't they? Oh, but they get one, two, three free war offensives. So yeah, let's put those on there and then see where we're at. One, two, three free war offensives. Now they're getting six resources, but they can only take four. So yes, they're definitely pulling this back to get their fifth offensive. And so they've got six resources and uh, five of those are immediately going to be spent. One, two, three, four, five on the rest of their offensives. Then they've got one that can convert into three builds and I think they just go one, two, three with the units, and now their force pool is empty. Oops. Jeez, that's a big, imposing Soviet stack there. Uh, okay. So now we move on to the Germans and Japanese. Well, the Germans, damn, they are in a bad situation. Los losing Berlin and not getting it back before the end of the turn is going to be a crushing blow to them. They lose a resource and a free offensive. But they've still got the Paris and Provence resources, so that is going to help carry them through here. And most importantly, they still have the Ruhr production site. If they, didn't, if they hadn't got that back at the end of the last turn, they would not be able to build anything. They wouldn't get any resources or offensives or anything of that nature. So they get two free war offensives, which is very little in the scope of things. And then they've got three resources. Definitely want to take at least two more offensives, and honestly, it's hard not to take the third, though they're very low on units. So I think we have to build out an air and an upgrade, and that's it. That's all they get, an air and a land upgrade. Um, the Italian air is helping to cover for their missing Luftwaffe right now, but they definitely need the other one out there. Um, and what else do they have? They have an air upgrade in here as well which would be great 
that was built from last turn and never actually came out. So they're probably going to reserve that counter. I'm going to move that over right now so I don't forget. They want that air to come out before the air upgrade. That's important. But, crap. They absolutely need an offensive early on, don't they? Or do they? Hmm. If they get the land upgrade instead, they can try to get Denmark back early on. I don't know. This is tough. And yet very important. They've got air cover right now. They don't need to get that air out necessarily. Uh, but you know what? If they take Berlin back, they're not going to have a flag to spend, and that's kind of a problem. But I think they want that land upgrade. They need to get armor superiority so that their offensives can be used as efficiently as possible in Denmark and in Berlin. So they're going to reserve that. And we'll come back to the others. I'm actually doing this a little out of order. I've been thinking about Germany's situation here for a little bit. Okay, so Japan. Japan is in a very unfortunate situation. They really needed to get that Manchuria resource back. They used all the resources that they had in China. And at this point... Uh, they did gain the Java resource just in time to lose the Manchuria resource. They had really hoped to have both of those. So anyway, Japan gets one free war offensive. And then it's got two other resources to spend. I think they would love to spend it on any of the other things here. But I think they can't possibly afford to. So I think they need both of the other offensives. Completely and utterly full. And they definitely want to reserve an offensive. That's Even though it's dangerous, they need that flag because they have a decent chance of failing their stability test. They need that offensive more than their flags at the moment. Okay, so now we go to Britain and the United States. Britain is looking much better this turn because they get their full income. One free war offensive plus four resources. Oh, I'm sorry. No, that's right. The Med is still closed. The only thing they gain is Canada. Um, and I... The U.S. is absolutely not sending anything to the Soviet Union. The Soviet Union definitely doesn't need it. You only do Lend-Lease to the Soviet Union if it looks like Germany is going to cause them to collapse or surrender. You don't want that. You want the Soviet Union hanging in there and limping along, but not in a place where they can win. That's where the Soviet, that's where the Americans uh, or the, the democracy player wants them. So, they got their one free war offensive as Britain. And what do they do with the other two resources they get? Do they need a third from the United States? I think they do. The U.S. is going to get tons of resources. So I think the Americans are going to transfer over one industrial resource to the United Kingdom, which gives them another free war offensive and a total of three resources to spend. So the first one, they've got a fleet, but not an upgraded fleet. So now they've got three resources to spend. Here, and that's 15 builds at total war. I'm sorry, not 15, nine, nine builds. So one, two, and three, four, five, six, plus another offensive. They've got four offensives there. That's their max, right? No, they've got six total. One, two, three, four. Where's the other offensives that they are missing? Oh, they're not. I just can't count. Two plus four is six. Duh. Hey, they don't get eight like the other powers do. Okay. So yeah, four is the best they're going to do. they got some more units coming out as well. Next turn is going to be big for them. They'll probably have most of their force pool built out. Okay, so that's the Britons. The Americans get six resources, including three industrial resources because they gave one to the British. Uh, so they get one, two, three war offensives, and then six resources. And what are they low on? Well, they lost an army in the previous fight there. And they've only got the one naval resource over here but most importantly they have no air over here the british air is helping to cover but there's only two of them yeah they definitely need some air so if they have six resources that is 18 builds one two three four five six seven hmm Eight nine. We'll give them another air uh, aircraft carrier. And 
And then from there, we can take three more offensives. One, two, three. That gets us to 18. I think that's a good pick for the Americans. Uh, and now we'll just do the reserves. So Italy is definitely going to reserve what? Il Duce? Yes, because we want to get that stability up. And then we want to be able to reuse Il Duce if we absolutely need to. Um, helping retake Germany. I don't know if that gives... If Italy takes Germany, Berlin, does that give Italy a flag or Germany for re uh, liberating the homeworld? I don't know. Anyway, uh, we'll look that up if it comes to it, because Italy doesn't actually have any units over there right now. But next we go to the Soviet Union, and the Soviet Union has to figure out what they're going to build off the bat. It might very well be an air unit, because they need one over here before the Japanese attack them in Manchuria to help solidify that control. Then we go to, we already did Germany and Japan. Now we're doing the Americans and the British. The Americans are in what one might call a dilly of a pickle here. They've, they're have they they're vulnerable in Berlin to a counterattack before they can reinforce it. And they're kind of vulnerable over here. There's a lot of Japanese forces and the Japanese have reserved a, an offensive to that end. Um, so what are the Americans going to do with their situation here? That's the big question. They've got a lot of things that they can put out. I think it's just going to be an offensive, right? They need to be able to act. And the British, too, unless, you know what? The British need to be able to act, but they need to be able to act with forces that can actually do something. And they need the naval forces to get up to snuff to deal with the, the uh, Italians here. So that's what they're going to do. All right, so we've got everybody reserved. Everything else goes into the Action Cup. Oops, there we go back here. There we go. Okay, everything's in the cup. Also, all the other things are in the cup. I believe we just make sure. Yes, we have crisis markers and home front markers in there as well. Okay, so here we go. The, let's see, the British will interrupt or the Americans will interrupt? The Americans, what do they have to do? Well, they could attack in the South Pacific before the Japanese go. But if they do that, that leaves the British open to being wiped out here by a German attack on Denmark. Uh, oh, the Germans actually just upgraded. They didn't, uh, they can't do that. But the Italians, oh, the Italians can't either. All right, the Americans are going to have to use that offensive somewhere. Maybe on Java? Give them a boost. Try to take that. Um, yeah, I think that's what they're going to do. The Americans are going to do an augmented attack into Java because that'll cripple the Japanese. If they can do that, they'll get a resource and Japan will get crippled by that attack. Uh, so they're going to use this infantry, actually, instead of the tank. They don't want to uh, waste their tank army here because if they tie, then both of them lose and then the Japanese just uh, hold the area. And then they're going to have air power come in and help. Now, the Japanese don't have any air adjacent to Java, so they don't get to do that. So, here's 3d6 plus 2 for the Americans. It's a 7. Here's 2d6 plus 1 for the Japanese. Is a 7. Oh, boy. Japan holds on, and the Americans lose their infantry army. This retreats back to the Philippines. Good thing they didn't use that tank. Now they've got a few more options there. Uh, but, um, that's not a great outcome for Japan, because they can't afford to trade unit for unit with the Americans. Uh, but it's a good thing they did use both those augmentations. Okay, uh, so Japan is definitely trumping in here. They're, they are going to be uh, interrupting and using their offensive. And they have a dangerous game that they're going to play. They're going to declare a base capture operation in... I can't even read what this says. This is Naru. Naru. Right? So a base capture operation in Nauru, and uh, that is going to be automatically successful. But you're allowed to bring in uh, naval and air units as part of a base capture operation. This one is actually operating at extreme range. Uh, so this is at a minus one, but the base capture operation is automatically successful. We don't have to roll dice. So after capturing this base... Because uh, if there's no defenders, then the base is automatically captured. Here we go. We need a Japanese air base. There it is. So this is now a Japanese air base. 
And that will now allow us to regroup. All right, so the carrier regroups back to the Carolyn Islands. The air might as well just stay there because the next operation is going to be targeting the New Hebrides. The New Hebrides Islands is the target of the next base capture operation. This is military action number two. We bring the naval unit in because you need at least one naval unit as part of a base capture operation. Then the air unit comes in to support. It doesn't actually need to. It can stay right where it was. Um, but the important thing is that we capture the New Hebrides base for the Japanese, which very importantly allows the Jap oh, that's the wrong thing. Where did I put that? There it is. Which allows the Japanese to stay at New Hebrides during the regrouping phase, right? Now we have one more military action, and unless I am deadly mistaken. Oh, I am, I missed one more thing. Um, during the attack on this airbase, this carrier was also a part of it, and it regrouped back to the Carolyn Islands as part of that, uh, part of that operation. Um, now, we have effectively cut supply from the Americas uh, over here, and we know that the British supply route is also not possible. It's actually not possible for the Americans, period. Uh, oh, no, it would be, actually. If if the Med was open, the Americans could trace from Washington all the way through the Indian Ocean, which is interesting. But as of right now, what you need is an open sea path not blocked by fleets or strategic air forces that all the entire thing has to be within two spaces of a friendly port. So you go from the American West Coast down to Hawaii, you're still within two sea spaces. You can go here and here, you're still within two sea spaces of Hawaii, all the way to Fiji, uh, sorry, the Gilbert Islands, which is within two spaces of both Fiji and American Samoa. But from here, the only legal place to go to try to get there is the Marshall Islands. This is why subs would be very useful. One sub would have allowed me to use these a little bit more effectively. But um, I had from the Marshall Islands, you can't you can't trace to within to two spaces of a port from the Marshall Islands. We've effectively completely cut off all the American supply. So now we dictate a base capture operation in the Bismarck Sea. And this is going to be from the unit from the New Hebrides. And we check supply, remember, before the units move into the area. So now these guys in the Bismarck Sea are in uh, limited supply. Then we move the units in. Uh, I'm sorry, first we, uh, yeah, we move the units in. And then we declare supporting units, which includes all fleets and air units adjacent to the target, which can also include these. And I think the Americans will throw in their fleet as well. Uh, but the purpose of this is to do as much damage as possible to the Americans. I'm not sure. By the way, this is the third military action, so they can't augment it. They just have to rely on that minus one from the from the supply and the fact that the Japanese uh, bringing carrier superiority to the battle. They're hoping for a triumph here and the destruction of all allied forces. That's unlikely, but we'll see. All right. So uh, two dice for the air battle for the Japanese and then two dice minus one for the Americans. Two dice for the Japanese is a six. That means the Americans have lost, but they've lost six to three. That's two losses for the Americans. They have to take it on that. Uh, and then the second loss could also, oh, you know what? They can stop air parity. They can take the other loss and now they still have air parity here. Yep, they took two losses. That's still kind of a good win for the for the uh, Japanese, but they probably would have liked to have the extra die going into this next battle. All right, so now it's two dice for the Japanese because they don't have air superiority and neither do the Americans. And one die minus one for the Americans. This could be really bad. Two dice for the Japanese. That's a five. That's a solid number. Then one die minus one for the Americans. Oh, no, it happened. That's what the Japanese were hoping for. A massive disaster for the Americans. So uh, that is going to cause three losses for the Americans. One, well, it's actually going to cost five losses, but they only have three. Then the air unit is going to have to retreat to Papa where it came from. They actually could retreat to the Solomon Sea. Um, let's see. It might as well retreat to the Solomon Sea so that if they try to capture that, then they can. All right. And then the 
uh, then the Japanese take the base. There we go. They've captured Rabul. Now the Japanese gain a flag, which they did desperately need to hold off the... Uh, and they get to put that in reserve to hold off the stability uh, situation here. And then they get to force the Americans to take a stability test. Here's three dice for the Americans for the disaster. They've got it. They're safe. Now the Japanese get to regroup, and I think they're basically going to do the same thing here. They're going to go carrier, carrier, air unit. And again... They've cut off supply to the Philippines. So now if the Americans try another attack, they'll be at minus one. Let's put this out there to remind us. Oops, not two of them. There's never a situation where you can be at double limited supply. All right. So, yeah, all of the units here are at limited supply. So the Americans... Man, they've got decimated on both sides. And even though the Java attack was technically a win for them, that disaster is a huge problem. The Japanese can now freely just continue to take a bunch of bases here. Like, if they take Fiji and American Samoa, then they don't even have to blockade anything anymore. They just completely cut this off. Right now, uh, yeah, they're, they're in trouble. So, let's see what happens next. We... Just did a Japanese, so the British or the Soviets could interrupt. The British might as well interrupt. They like to keep their reserve open, and they'll flip over the only other fleet they have on the board. That allows the Germans to interrupt with their land army upgrade. They're gonna, the Japanese are going to let them do that, uh, and that allows them to upgrade their only other army on the map. Then the Soviets will interrupt to place their air in Manchuria before the Japanese get an offensive up there. And then Japanese or Il Duce, they both have a problem with stability, but Italy is going to have the bigger problem. So Italy will use Il Duce to attempt to improve stability. Here's a propaganda for Italy. It's failure. That's very bad news for the fascist player. Uh, then the Japanese can't interrupt, so we go to the cup. It's a British offensive. Hmm. Well... I'm just looking, and I don't see a good offensive for them, except they can't attack East Prussia directly. They could use a redeployment to make their navy less vulnerable. Right now, that's the biggest problem. I don't think they want to use this to attack with. I mean, they could attack... Yeah, they could attack with the thing that's not the deployment. So they can deploy and then attack with a separate thing. And I think that's exactly what they're going to do. So they're going to deploy their carrier fleet back to Scotland... Uh, because previously it was very vulnerable to uh, an attack from the Italian Navy, at w which would gain carrier superiority. And from the Baltic Sea, it was preparing for an invasion of East Prussia, but that's no longer necessary. Now we've got a land battle in proper Germany. So, uh, And then they're going to do, for the second action, an attack into the Western Approaches, try to kill this German sub. And they don't need to augment that. They've got armor, and, uh, sorry, carrier and air superiority, so they probably don't need to augment this. This is three dice versus one die. Six to six! Oh! Oh, no, they did need to augment it. The British carriers are knocked down. They killed the Ge the, the German... Uh, they, they Oh, you know what? Let's put the carriers in here so that we can activate them together. Or if we put them up here, then the carriers up here can activate together. That was a good call. The But, damn, the... Uh, the British Navy is getting uh, hit hard in Europe here. They don't even have any Navy in the Pacific. That's how hard they've been hit up in Europe. Um, okay, that's the end of that second. And then the third they were going to use to build something. And I think it was just going to have to be an extra air. Because um, right now they've only got two. Having a third up there could be very important. All right, so that's the British offensive. That goes to available. And the Japanese are going to interrupt to try to increase their stability. They did so successfully. All right, and then the British will interrupt to add this air unit to London and then, hmm, send it over to Denmark, yeah. London isn't actually threatened at the moment, although it could be very soon. All right, now we move on to the cup. An Italian offensive, that's what they've been waiting for, but what are they going to do with it? That's a very good question. Huh. They could do a naval attack on London with air with carrier superiority. And maybe no, not air superiority though. 
They could do an offensive into Romania. And actually, if they augment it with plus two, that's pretty good odds, especially at killing Soviet air. So that's what they're going to do. Even though this is just a single loan, they're just trying to weaken the Soviets and maybe get Romania. Very unlikely, but they're going to try. So with a plus two here, I mean, they really don't have anything to do with these carriers right now. Um, oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. The Romania attack is actually fairly weak because there's not a huge chance of actually capturing Romania and they could get the benefit of being in Yugoslavia and defense territory later. But if they did an air attack on Denmark, they might wipe out that air with a plus two and that would allow the Germans to take it back very easily. And then the Germans could use fewer actions to take that less augmentations in Denmark so that they could use an augmentation they could use extra actions to take back Berlin. That is probably the best play. So this the Italians are going to do a air attack, the Battle of Denmark in the air. Uh, and this is going to be augmented at a plus 2. So here's 2d6 plus 2. Oh, that's only a five. Two d six straight up is a six. I can't believe it. The Italians completely flubbed it. Uh, oops. Uh, I didn't mean to go to the cup. That goes back to available. There we go. All right. Next out of the cup, a Soviet infantry, and this is just getting worse for the Japanese. The la that infantry goes out to Manchuria. Next out of the cup, the Japanese home front. Good timing. They can now redistribute their forces as needed. Uh, but first, that stability test, 2d6 minus 2. Okay, they only lose one level. And now, how are they going to redistribute things here? That is the question. Well, I don't think they need two air up in Manchuria. Well, now they do because that air came over. They didn't need two air, but now they do. I think they're picking up this logistics marker. I don't know where they need it yet, but they're picking it up. Um, and the naval unit in the South China Sea is not necessary anymore because they've already f invaded Java. So maybe they put it in the Western Caroline Islands and that actually frees up the air unit here. No, that frees up this naval unit. So maybe we don't put that in the cup. No, it doesn't free it up. We still have to block the Bismarck Sea. Otherwise, the Marshall Islands... No, the Marshall Islands are still not within two of the Bismarck Sea. Yeah, we don't have to block the Bismarck Sea anymore. We did when it was a uh, port controlled by the Americans. Oh, no. You know what? I think I screwed up that local supply situation there. No, because we had units in the Carolyn Islands when we were blocking that. Now I remember. But we don't have to do that anymore because the Marshall Islands is three away from Papa. So... We don't have to block the Caroline Islands or the Bismarck Sea anymore. So we can put both naval units here so that we could easily attack and destroy these two naval units here. Yep, that's probably the best. And then we've got another naval unit. Let's put it in the Bismarck Sea so that they can all support each other. That's probably for the best. No, because that leaves Tokyo open if the Americans get sneaky and try to attack. Even with limited combat, they might get lucky and capture Tokyo. And that's really not acceptable. So we have to leave Okinawa defended. Okay. That all having been done, the Japanese are probably ready to move on. The home front is done. And we go on to the next pull from the cup. Soviet flag. The Soviets have two flags. And they're actually the ones doing best on stability right now, but there's no guarantee of that. So I think they want to reserve their flag in the hopes that their home front comes up before the other flag. And if we need it, we can use it for propaganda twice, this flag and the other flag. All right, so next out of the cup is the Civil War Resolution. Spain is over. We finished that Civil War. I don't think we have any other Civil Wars in the map except China, which is just them trying to expand. So they're going to try to expand into Sichuan, I guess. The Germans get to choose, but they don't. There's no. They have to start taking over Japanese cubes, which is too bad. But 2d6 into Sichuan is a success, so that knocks out the Japanese cube, and we add extra Chinese communists in Sichuan. All right. So the Japanese lose one victory point, and so far no other victory points have traded hands this game, as far as I can remember. All right. So the Civil War resolution is done. I'm going to put that over here. And next, we pull from the cup, and it's a British infantry. They've got the one over here in the Bay of Bengal, which is actually cut off because Egypt is gone. 
Uh, we could put this infantry down in South Africa in the attempt to maybe get Egypt back with a naval invasion through the Arabian Sea, but I think we actually need to go put it in Denmark because that's our little lifeline there into Germany. We don't want to lose that and have to do a naval invasion later. So that's good. Next out of the cup is a German flag. They've been hoping to get that. They're going to do propaganda. 2d6 for them, and they've got it. Germany refuses to give up. There we go. Next out of the cup, the British home front. This could be bad. This could be real bad if they roll poorly here. 3d6, though, not likely. Okay, that's a 1. That was real close. Real close. All right, now the British can redistribute their units however they like. Hmm... I think they're basically good. I don't think they need to redistribute them anymore. I want to leave the British and the American up here in Scotland because then either of them can declare an offensive and the other one comes along with it. All right, next out of the cup, another German flag. They're probably going to use this to try to crush Berlin. They don't need an augmentation against Berlin. Berlin has is, is in low supply, it's got no air support, and it's going to lose tank superiority here. So yes, they're going to try maneuvers here. 2d6. Oh, they lost their cube here earlier. 2d6. They got it. The Germans are now assaulting to take back Berlin from Patton, who's holding it out as long as he can. Let's see what happens. The Italians will provide air support. 3d6 straight up for the Germans. 1d6 minus 1 for the Americans. And it's a disaster in addition to not being able to retreat. It's also a disaster. That's bad news for the Americans. Yeah, because it was 3 losses. 6 to 2. 6 to 1 actually. 6 losses. Alright, so the Americans lose 2 VP. The Germans gain... Uh, 2 VP, because they're no longer negative in Berlin. And that means the fascists gain 2 VP and the democracies lose 2 VP. Berlin is back. Germany regroups uh, to the Ruhr. And so did the, does the Italian air. All right. That was a massive success for Germany. And now we go back to the cup. Soviet offensive. Hmm. If they only had that tank upgrade in Manchuria, they'd probably go after Korea. Oh, they wouldn't get it because it's adverse terrain in Korea. Oops. So, I don't think it behooves them to attack over here. I mean, they could get a plus two, and that would solidify their Manchurian resource. But I think there's just so many other juicy targets. That's what they got to focus on right now. Because at this point... The Germans have managed to hold off the Americans and the British. Do you go for their throat right now? Ideally, the Soviets want to grab Berlin and the Ruhr before they have to fight the Americans. Do they wait one more turn for the Germans to fight and take out Denmark and then go in? I think that they start nibbling at the edges right now. So, the Soviets are going to... Uh, use this offensive. Three military actions. The first one is to take Poland. So they're going to move in, and they're going to have to use just the one and one, which is 3d6. This is one action, no augmentation. 3d6 is six. The Polish defenders are from Italy. It's 1d6 minus one for the tank superiority, and that's clearly a, a victory. Um, we do not get a triumph, unfortunately. So that's gone, and that is gained. So Italy and fascists down one, communists up one. Still a massive gap, but the Soviets have pushed in. They're going to regroup with these units, get them both into Poland. Uh, hmm, that was their first military action. I think they take East Prussia, do they? At this point? Yeah, I mean, why not? It'll get them a flag, force the Germans to take a stability test, and it's and it's easy to do with just one action. So that's what they're going to do. They're going to take East Prussia. So they're moving in a tank army and an air unit. Uh, that gives them 3d6. Ooh, that's only a 4. Versus 1d6 minus 1. 
is a three, just barely. Whew. They regroup back to Poland, and the Soviets get plus one, and the fascists get... Did I give Italy a point by accident earlier? No, they have seven. Okay. Um, the fascists lose one, and the Italians lose one. I'm sorry, the Germans lose one, not the Italians. There we go. All right. So that was number two. Number three is going to be Hungary. See, this is three military actions, but they're all with tank and air superiority, so I don't feel like I have to augment them. Uh, although this one might not have an air superiority. It's a little bit dicey because the Italians are going to come into support. All right, so 2d6 versus 2d6 straight up. Here's the Soviet roll. That's a four. The Italian roll is a five, and the Soviets actually have to retreat their air to save it. All right, now we have the Soviets with 2d6 versus 2d6 straight up. Four, six, the Soviets retreat. Well, it was worth a try. They didn't actually lose anything for that, and they've got two other things. So, um, overall, pretty good for the Soviets. Next, out of the cup. Oh, I'm sorry, the Soviets gained a flag there, by the way. And the Germans had to take a stability test. 2d6, they held. They held. Soviet, uh, Japanese offensive. So, now's the question. Oh, you know what we did wrong with Japan? I keep giving myself breaks and go back and fix things because I'm thinking of three different powers at once. And if I was just playing as the fascist, I would probably t take more time thinking about this. But let me fix this here. Because the Japanese still want to block the supply, but they also need to have air support for the attack into the Philippines. So that's what they're going to do. Um, okay. So that's how they regrouped it earlier. The attack onto the Bismarck Sea, or the, their their home front is what allowed them to move all the stuff around. And that would have been a legal move to keep them in uh, the Western Carolina Islands. Okay. So now the question is, how many offensives do they have left? This is their second to last offensive. They really want Manchuria back. But they'd also love to hit the Philippines while the Americans are still weak. But the but Manchuria is just more important. A double augmented attack into Manchuria. Yep, that's what we got to do. And we'll only bring in the tank army. Actually, you know what? We'll only bring in the infantry army. Because a tie with the tank army doesn't help us, and a tie with the infantry army doesn't help. You know, but the tank army, to get that back, costs two resources. To get this back costs only one, right? So I think that's the best play. So double augmented attack means... 2d6 plus 2 for the Japanese. They really need a 6 here. There's the 6. That's an 8. 2d6 straight up for the Soviets. 8 to 6. So they have to retreat their air. Uh, that gives the Japanese air superiority. They would have liked to have done more damage, but that's okay. So 3d6 plus 2 is a 7. Versus 2d6 plus 1 is a 7. Oof. Again, that is slightly better for the Japanese on an individual battle basis because the Soviets just lost two, two builds worth of a unit and the Japanese only lost one. Ugh, but <laughs> the Soviets can replace that so much easier than the Japanese. Yep, Japan is really in trouble now. All right, next out of the cup. Actually, I think the Soviets might intervene here with their flag, because they have none left in reserve. If they take something, uh, then they won't be able to gain a flag. So right now, they're going to spend their flag on maneuvers, actually. They've got maneuvers as a box, so this is 2d6 minus 1 plus 1, so it's straight up... Oh, it's a loss. They missed. So now they've got 2 in the maneuvers track. Now we go back to the cup, and we get a German flag. Hmm... I think they have to try to crush Denmark. This is their this is their moment. But do they do it without augmentation? That's a little dangerous, isn't it? Maybe they do a maneuvers just to get that army into Silesia. Although that's not a great play either. Oh, but they could lose Berlin again. Maybe what they use this for is maneuvers in the hope to put down something else on the map. So here is 2d6 for maneuvers for the Germans. 
they failed it anyway. And actually, they probably should have held on to this first propaganda, but they'll hold on to the next one for propaganda. All right. Well, it was worth a try. They really wanted to build one more thing, get it out on the map. Anyway, next out of the cup is the Crisis. 2d6 is a 6-4. All right, a 6-4 resistance. The United Kingdom chooses an area without any powers land units and at least one fascist or communist cube. The controlling power performs an effectiveness check. If it fails, remove all cubes and retreat all non-land units. So, which areas would be most vulnerable to this? Where is that one linchpin? Paris would be nice, but the Germans have a fortress there, so that won't work. Let's put that by the coast. It looks nicer there. Fortress Fortress Europe starting right there in Paris. Um, could be Benelux. That could give them another edge there. You know what? Egypt. Egypt is the obvious choice here, because Italy only rolls one die, and getting Egypt back would be very valuable to the British. So this is the what remains of the British garrison in Egypt that split up into a resistance movement. Here we go, 1d6 for the Italians. They missed it. They lose Egypt. That is minus one for the Italians and plus one for the democracies and for the British. But more importantly, it's opened up the Mediterranean again, and the Italians have to get back down there to block it. Very, very good move by the British there. Uh, all right, next out of the cup, an American offensive. Well, <laughs> they've got a bit of a problem here. They're going to need to start building again, and I think that's what they're going to do with this. So... One, two, three, like, yeah, we need land units. I mean, we need naval units too, but, ugh. Yeah, I mean, at this point, Japan might survive all the way through the end. And but they'll have more offensives, so... That's all they can do right now. They ran out of the land units. They can't. If they can at least get Germany to surrender and get some cubes over here, that might help enough. Might help enough. All right. So, next out of the cup, an American air upgrade. The Solomon Sea, nor can the, can the Philippines trace. Because that Marshall Islands is not within two of a friendly port. Can't go all the way to Papa, can't go all the way to Fiji. So... It has to go in reserve. Uh-oh. Well, they were going to use it to upgrade one of those, but they can't You. Oh, no. Oh, no. They can't upgrade anything. Well, that was a bad pull for the Americans. They couldn't place this out in time. But this is only one build. That's two. So I guess we'll throw this away and put this back into... Re and put this in reserve and hope. All right, next out of the cup, a British infantry... We've already put... Let's put this down in... In uh, in Egypt. We can trace there right now. Nothing's stopping us. Right? Egypt is a port. It gets us all the way to the Central Med. The Turanian is within two of the of, of uh, Gibraltar. The Italians should have tried to capture that if they could. All right, yeah. They can put it directly into Egypt and make, make that a nightmare for the Italians to retake. Uh, all right, a Japanese offensive, the last Japanese offensive. Obviously, they have to throw everything they have at Manchuria one more time. And the Soviets, of course, uh, bring their air back in. They brought it back in during regrouping of the last battle. All right, 2d6 plus 2. They need another 6. That's, an, that's a 7. That's a 9. All right, 2d6. They need the Soviets to completely whiff here. 9 to 6 is still forcing the air out, but the Soviets keep rolling those 5s and 6s on defense. All right, 3d6 plus 2, that's an 8, versus 2d6 plus 1 is a 4. That is what they needed. That is two losses. The Soviets take one of them and retreat the other, and the Manchurian area is reclaimed by the Japanese. Wow. Wow. That was a giant pain for them to do, but they finally got it. 
And that's that's all that they've done. The entire thing, all they've done is they wiped out the American Navy and tried to take Manchuria a couple of times. They held on to Java just barely. So, you know, that's a pretty good turn. That's probably the best they could have hoped for. The, the only thing that could have gone better is if the first attack into Manchuria was really successful and they got to use the other attack to finish off the Philippines. But you can't always get what you want. So we got to manipulate here. We get another victory point for Japan. Minus one for the communists. And they're pl for plus one for the fascists. All right. The Americans will interrupt with their air. No, they still can't. They can't interrupt with that. That's very bad for them. The Italians have an offensive. Did they try the Denmark attack again? They won't get another chance to hit anything with their navy. But they actually need to redeploy their navy. Because they definitely want to blockade the Mediterranean again. Hmm. Yep, that's a hard pick. I think they are going to redeploy their navy and put one in the Tyrrhenian Sea and one in the Central Mediterranean. That's not great, but if the British try to attack the Tyrrhenian Sea, the Central Med can come support. So the Tyrrhenian is what's actually blocking. This is just here for support. Or, I mean, do they leave this up here and hope that they can utilize it sometime later? You know what? No. They leave this one in the Western approaches. No, that's just asking to be attacked. We're going to keep them together. Just keep the med blocked is still cutting the income of Britain by half. That's still good. All right. So that was their redeployment. Now they are going to use the other two. Oh, they only get one other action. Well, they're still going to use it to attack... Ugh, no, they're not. No, they're not. Hmm. Is there a better place for their air? I don't think so. They had to use this to deploy. Otherwise, they'd. N this is their last offensive. They and they have nothing else in the cup. They would get no other movements. Do we really want to attack the British air? Yeah, we're going to use it. We're going to hope for a good result, even without augmentation, because they're only at mobilization and not total war. 2d6 versus 2d6. There's the Italian 6 and the Defender 6. That's kind of a bad result for Italy, but it means that an augmented attack from Germany will be much easier to finish off and or remove the British air completely. Okay, so now we go back to the cup. Uh, available. Here we go. There's the German attack we were waiting for. So the Germans are definitely going into Denmark. They want to wipe this thing out and it actually force them back to Norway. All right. So the air battle is 2d6 plus 2. That's an 8 versus 2d6. That's a, uh, that's a 3. 8 to 3 is 2 losses and that is goodbye to the British air. Now we get 3d6 versus 1d6. 3d6 plus 2 versus 1d6. This could be a nice triumph for the Germans. That's a 7. 7 to 2. That is definitely a triumph because that is 3 losses. 6 to 2 is a 3 losses. And that is exactly how many they have. No, wait, it's not, is it? Yeah, the, the wording is you can't retreat if you would still be destroyed after retreating. But they can suffer one, one, two, and then three is retreat, and they're not destroyed. So that is legal. It's not a triumph, but it was very effective. The British lose a point, and the Germans gain a point. Denmark becomes theirs. The question now is, do they regroup to Germany or do they try to continue and take them out of Norway? I think they have to regroup to Germany. Or leave one in Germany and one in Denmark and then leave the air in Denmark. That gives them the option to attack Norway later, but also leaves the Ruhr with defenses here that can't be dealt with. I mean, there's actually nothing that can invade now, is there? The Americans don't even have anything on this map. And even if they put something in London, it's not going to get upgraded immediately. But they don't need to to invade Norway. So we're going to leave this 
in the Ruhr. All right, that was all of the offense, uh, all of the military actions. We go to the cup. That's a Soviet. This is the this is the moment the Soviets have been waiting for, I think, where they're going to unleash everything they've got on the Germans. I mean, they've still got quite a few offensives. They don't even have to re re attack with everything. So that let's let's play smart with the Germans because yeah, they push them back to Norway, but they can also see the Russian threat. Let's let's be smart about this. So they're going to pull back to to the Ruhr with everything, so they can counterattack the Soviets if need be. And the Germans are running out of offensives. The Soviets still have a lot in the cup. They still have six after this. So it looks like the Soviets are about to overrun Europe. But let's see how this tracks. So they're going to declare an offensive into, or uh, sorry, an operation into Silesia, unaugmented. Everybody here from Poland is going in. And they're, the air from Italy is going in. So, you know, when they hear that there's no augmentation, they're like, yeah, don't got much to lose here. So 2d6 versus 2d6, that's a five for the Soviets and a five for the Italians. Both are gone, but now Germany has no air cover. The Soviets are happy with that result. And next, we do the land combat. 3d6 is a seven. 1d6 minus one is a four. Totally successful. The Soviets gain another victory point. And the Italian... And the, um, the Germans lose one, and they have to suffer a stability test. Here we go. 2d6. They hold. They hold it steady. All right. Attack number two into Berlin. Also not augmented. And this is going to be 3d6. That's a 6. And 1d6 minus 1 is a 3. And that is also successful. And that is... Actually, a flag for the Soviets for taking the other one, but I forgot to put it in here. Now, two flags for them, but they don't have them. And two stability tests for the Germans, and two points. Let's do the point swing. Uh, okay, two stability tests for the Germans. Pass, pass. They're holding strong. All right. Now, the Soviets, I think, are going to back up to Silesia because they don't want to get cut off. Even right now, the Germans could hit Poland and cut them off, but that's why they're using the final augmentation to move these units forward and put Leningrad... Oh, you know what? They were going to attack Archangel. Let's just let the Germans have that. If we f force them to surrender, then they lose Archangel. If they had more forces and we were worried about a flanking attack, then we would do something about it. But right now, that is just better. These guys are going to stay where they are. And I think these guys in Romania are going to stay where they are. If they have a full offensive, they can spend on Yugoslavia later. They might, but not right now. That's it. Um, so Poland at least has some defense. We have a double air and a double tank armies in, uh, in Silesia. And we're ready for the next Soviet offensive to hit the Ruhr with as much force as possible. Next out of the cup. Uh, is an American offensive. I think they're going to use this as builds. We just established that they've got a problem here. Here's two to get one more fleet coming out for next turn. And then one more infantry going into the cup. Because we have a lot of American air in the cup, I believe. One, two American air forces in the cup. We still have to wait for this stupid thing. Okay. Fine. We'll throw another air in the cup just to increase our odds of getting that sooner. We'll put more infantry in later. All right. That's the American offensive. They don't... They, they had such a promising fight in the last game, but it's looking bad now. The Soviets get a flag. They're going to use that as an offensive, right? Or no, as a build... Yeah, they've got maneuver, so let's do 2d6 minus uh, plus 1 is a success, so they lose their cubes here. And then, I think Germany actually succeeded in its maneuvers earlier. Um, maybe not. Alright, we'll leave it there for now. Uh, the Soviets are going to use it as a build. 
and they're going to put an error into the cup because they lost that one error over here. All right. And they can't interrupt, so we go back to the cup. Soviet Army Upgrade. We go back over here and flip Urkursk, which gives us a chance to invade Manchuria again. Or do we do it to Romania? Or do we do it to Poland? I think we want the tank army over in Urkursk. Uh, because if we take Manchuria, we can maybe use it to grab some more victory points in China. All right. Next out of the cup, an American offensive again. Damn. What are they going to do? This stupid American carrier is over here, and it doesn't have anything to attack because the Italians ran away. So what we're going to do with this is redeploy it to the Pacific because we desperately need it over there. But it's going to have to stop in California, unfortunately. Wait a minute, no. The Med is not clear. I was going to say the Med is clear. They can go through Egypt. No, but they can't. I think they're going to redeploy... During this redeployment, they're also going to use the sub to plug the hole to make sure that the Italians can't get out next turn to block any supply there. And you could also move the sub over here to be sneaky with stuff, but I think that's fine. Other redeployments. I think that's it for redeployment. So then they've got two left. Did they build one more fleet? Or a couple of air forces? Or a logistics base, right? Because they the problem they have right now is they don't have a base. Yeah. So they're going to build a logistics base. And... An infantry army. All right. Next out of the cup, where do the Soviets intervene? No, they've got one flag in reserve, so they're going to hold on to that there. Next out of the cup, Soviet infantry army. I think we put that in Poland and continue our sweep. This is great to get, but the extra infantry army is not going to help us get it. So instead, we're going to put this in Poland... And it gives us more options over there to attack Czechoslovakia. An American uh, flag is going to be used as propaganda to try to get their stability up. Oh, it's a fail. That's not great for them. You don't want the Americans to collapse. But they're not going to get another flag unless they take more territory. Damn. They're in big trouble now with that miss. The Soviets get an offensive and they're going to use it in the Ruhr. Fully augmented, I think. Right? That's kind of what they have to do. Before the German air comes out. Yep. They're going to do that. Soviets are going into the Ruhr. Fully augmented. So that's 3d6 plus 2 is a 7. And the defending target gets 2d6 straight up is a 5. They flip 1. And now the Soviets have air and armor superiority for the next battle. And now they go to the cup. There's an American offensive. There's so many of them. They could do so much good here. And I think actually, no crap. They need this guy to come to the Hawaiian Islands. And this guy will go down to American Samoa. No, because that guy's within. No, he's not in a port, so he can't be part of an operation or support. And the Japanese don't have any more things anymore anyway, right? Damn. That's still dangerous. We know how many times we've lost our stupid naval forces. Okay. Let's just keep them in a place where they can help. Put them in American Samoa. Put them in Fiji, it's dangerous, because then this naval unit can declare an attack, an offense. No, it can't, because it's not on a port. That's what we determined. It's fine. That's fine. We're all fine here. Okay. Now, for the other two, I think I'm going to build another fleet. I mean, I hate to do that, Like, but the final turn, is that fleet going to even be useful? Is it going to come out in time? No, we can't do it. I want to do another air upgrade right now. But I can't ensure that I'll have the ability to do so. Not right now. 
So instead, let's take one more air and one more infantry and add them to the cup. Next turn, we will not need to build anything with our offensives, hopefully. But let's get more things out. The Soviets are not going to interrupt. They want to hold on to those flags. But they don't. They don't, do they? They're going to try maneuvers with this flag. That's actually a success. They needed the six because they're at military reforms. And I might have missed that before and done a poor uh, setup. So they're going to use that to build their last infantry unit. And now they got no reason not to be attacking every time. Next out of the cup, a British offensive. Well, it's a little late for that. They could try to take Denmark back. There's no air coverage. So I think that's what they're going to do. It'll at least allow American reinforcements to go straight to Denmark to contest the Soviets here. So the first thing the British are going to do is a deployment. They're going to move the air unit up to Norway. The naval unit in Scotland... Oh, I'm sorry, the, the, Je the German air naval forces in Prussia had to retreat uh, when they lost it. Yep, I don't think the British have anything else they can do right now. So, we now put the rest of the offensive into an attack on Denmark, so this is going to be augmented with a plus one. 3d6 plus one is a seven, which means the Denmark forces can't beat it, even with a six. Jesus. Um... So the Germans lose a cube. Fascists lose a cube. And the democracies gain one and the British gain one. All right. And the British are going to regroup to Norway, allowing American forces to enter Denmark because the British just don't have that many offensives yet left and don't have much coming out of the cup either. Actually, the air is going to stay in Denmark for sure. Um... Now, you know what? The British can stay in Denmark because they can get upgraded with a tank army later. Okay. The Soviets will interrupt then and put out their last army. But where? I think down in the Caucasus. We can maybe get some more resources down there with that army if we have extra offensives and nothing to do with them. We could put it in Irkutsk. Irkutsk. Or Kutsk. Uh, but we're going to put it in the Caucasus. Give us more options to get more victory points in other places. Next, out of the cup, is the second crisis. 2d6 is a 3-2. That is Chinese resistance. All right. Yunnan for, this, for the uh, Japanese is a pass. Guangxi for the Japanese is a pass. Guangdong for the Japanese is a fail. They lose Guangdong. And the Japanese and the fascists lose a VP. Jiangsu for the Japanese is also a fail. And then Hebei for the Japanese is also a fail. And Shahar for the Japanese is a pass. Okay, so they lose only one more. And wow, look at this. The fascists went from 27, 28 down to 21 because in part due to those Chinese resistance rolls, but also due to the other things happening in Europe with Germany getting partially invaded here. Uh, so this goes down here and we're... Closer to sudden death now. There's the American air that they have been so desperately waiting for. But now they have to get something other than an allied result, and they got it. The Soviets. Hmm. This fortress. I kind of would like to put it in Romania, but I can't do it until we move out of there. Ooh. I guess we put it in the Baltic states. Prussia. No, the Baltic states blocks more to the north. I can now pick up this fortress and put it in the cup and remove it somewhere else. All right. That allows the Americans to upgrade this air unit. And now they're finally in a position to do something in the Pacific. Next out of the cup, a German offensive. Something they had been hoping for for a while. They're going to probably use it to take back Berlin. But they have no, zero air cover if they do that. That's too bad, but they're going to do it anyway with a plus one augmentation. So they're going in with, with armor superiority, but not air superiority. So ugh, the 
total then is two versus two plus one versus two. So here's two plus one. That's a five versus two. It's a six, and they have to retreat. Oh, no. But at least it wasn't a tie. For their last result, they're going to put an air unit in reserve. Next out of the cup, an American air unit. Now they're coming fast and furious. Um, let's put this in the Pacific somewhere. Let's put it in Wake Island. Or down in Fiji. Fiji's an even better place. All right, the Germans are then going to interrupt and put their air out in the Ruhr. Next out of the cup, an American infantry. As we mentioned, we were planning to put that into Denmark and upgrade it later. Because right now there's nowhere we could really put it. We can't get it to Australia even because of this Japanese blockade. All right, next, British air. Well, that's going to go in Denmark and support any American-British combined operations over there. Oh, the other German air into the Ruhr. Another Soviet fortress. Uh, I guess we can put it in Mongolia just to prevent the Japanese from doing something really sneaky over there in the future. <sighs> yeah, let's do that. There's not a lot of good uses for it over here right now. I can pick up and put it in the cup later if I need to move it. An American upgrade! Flipping that. And Soviet flag. We're going to put that in reserve. Use it as propaganda when the home front comes out. We haven't seen most of the home front markers. Third crisis. A 2-1 civil war. Two more dice gives us a four result, which is Yugoslavia. Yugoslavia. Er oh, it can't erupt in civil war. The Italians have forces there. So there we go. All right, so they put down the uprising, and we go to the cup, an American infantry unit. We could put it in Norway as backup over there, or we could put it in California with the intention of reinforcing New Guinea or something. I don't think we'll need it over here. We probably only need this one land unit to retake Java, so we're going to put it into Norway. And if something goes horribly wrong in, uh, in Germany, we can... Bring in that as a reinforcement. All right, next out of the cup, Soviet air. I think we're going to give that to Romania. No, we're going to give that to the Caucasus. Yeah, Soviet defensive in the Caucasus now effective. Uh-oh, Italia is going to have a big problem here. One die minus one. Oh, 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 oh boy. Oh, boy. That's dangerous for the fascists. They need Italy to be strong. But how does Italy be strong if they can't actually do anything? They need to take another area. All right. Italy can now move things around with their home front. <sighs> I want to put them in position to get another Italian flag. You know, I was originally thinking if the Italians take back an allied territory, either they or the Germans would get a flag. But the way that it's written, flags by game, game events, removing an enemy cube from one of its own home areas or one of its colony areas containing a resource. That means if Italy successfully saves a German area from the Soviets, neither of them get a flag. That's too bad. Apologies, guys. It looks like I had paused it for a few minutes without realizing I hadn't unpaused it. Um, but what you missed here is just a few attacks from the Soviets. I think they got two or three offensives that they've been using to pound Berlin with. They also attacked from Poland into Czechoslovakia with an unaugmented attack, hoping that the air superiority would be enough. And the Germans got a triumph defending it. Uh, the Soviets kind of thought, well, what's the worst that could happen? We try to take Czechoslovakia. It'll give us a chance to hit Bavaria with some other forces easy. And uh, the worst that could happen, we'll be forced to retreat maybe. We've got three dice, but they rolled a two on three dice. Very unlikely. So anyway, yeah, they lost the two units that were in Poland. Um, the Italians moved back to Lombardy. I think, I don't know if we covered that, but they moved back to Lombardy with one of their final offensives. And then they built something uh, because they are really worried about uh, 
about getting uh, their stability lost here. So, <sighs> at this point, an American logistics marker has just come out. And they're going to put it in Fiji, I think. Yeah, to Fiji. That's a pretty good spot. A, a Japanese flag. They're going to use that for propaganda. 2d6 is a success. The Japanese are going to survive. Right now, I think the Japanese survival is probably the only thing propping up the fascists, because I'm pretty sure Germany's going down. Pretty sure. And the Japanese need to uh, get a few more cubes to make up for those Chinese resistance rolls. Okay, next out of the cup, a British flag. The British definitely need to use this on propaganda, and they are successful. But the British haven't been taking many home areas of any enemy countries, so... Next out of the cup, another air for the Soviets. They have so much air. Let's put this over in Irkutsk because they don't need it in Romania since the Italians pulled out. They can now hit Yugoslavia, Bulgaria, and Hungary and get a bunch of victory points that way because we're coming up on the last turn. A German flag allows them to maybe build something. They don't have anything to take back right now or they could take Poland? No, they don't have the air to do it. Um, yeah. Not not super worth it. Um, I think they might do a maneuvers, though. Just to get this unit back into Berlin. Yeah, that's what they're going to try. 2d6 is a success. So for maneuvers, they could put this unit back into Berlin, or they could build another army. Let's build another army. It gives us slightly more flexibility. And now, as long as this isn't a fascist or Soviet thing, it's not. It's an American offensive, but the Americans are going into the Ruhr, you bet your ass. And the uh, British are coming in to help with their air. So 3d6. Uh, this is, by the way, not augmented. No reason to augment this. Um, 4 versus 1d6 minus... Oh, sorry. If they're not augmenting... They're going to augment it with a plus 1, and, this, and the Germans will come in. Um, we'll redo the rolls here. I forgot that the Germans had air units. So, yeah... The Br they will augment this with a plus one, so it's 2d6 plus one is a five versus the Germans, three. They have to retreat, and now it's uh, 3d6 plus one versus 1d6 minus one. Yep, that's automatically a success. And the Americans finally get another cube back in the Ruhr. The Americans get a flag, and they'll put that in reserve. And then they have one more attack they could make. Regrouping also possible, but we're going to stay in two... Uh, we're going to stay in the rear here. The Oh, you know what? These guys have to retreat to Belgium. Uh, oops, we got too many here. One needs to go back into Portugal. So the Germans have to take a stability test because they lost the Ruhr. They succeed. But the Americans have one military action remaining. Attacking Berlin might just make it easier for the Soviets. And the Americans probably have just as many offensives left in the cup as the Soviets do. I think they're going to use that final offensive to take the Marshall Islands. It's an extreme range for both the air and the naval, but it is... Uh, so it's going to be minus one. So the the Japanese will... Oh, the, you know what? That's what we determined. This unit, because it's not an air unit, can't scramble to defend the Marshall Islands. We left the air over in the Western Carolina, assuming we were going to be able to go after the Philippines at some point. But the Manchurian offensive failed, and so we had to use this last offensive up there instead of getting the Philippines back. So the Marshall Islands is automatically successful because there are no air or naval defenders. So we pull up an American air base and put it in the Marshall Islands. Now, these units may regroup, uh, and regrouping means they can move to a base within range, including extended range, if that's what they used to get there, and they did indeed use extended range to get there, and that allows them to retreat, not retreat, but regroup down to Fiji. So, now they are in a strong position to start hitting these Japanese bases and get supply going back to the Philippines. Okay, that's the American offensive. The Germans will use this moment to put another ground unit in Berlin. <laughs> I can't believe they keep holding on. Uh, the Americans are going to use this flag that they have in reserve to work on propaganda. It's still not successful! Oh, no! 
the Americans are now in the danger zone. They have one more flag in the cup. Uh, but if that doesn't come out before their uh, home front, they could be in they could be in danger. The Germans gain a flag. Oh man. They're at steady stability, baby. But their home front's coming out, too. I don't think... They can't get an, a tank upgrade with it. So what does getting an additional maneuver build do? One more air unit? A fortress they could put out next turn? They can't even build a naval unit. If the Ruhr was still theirs, they could build a naval unit and try to help blockade the United Kingdom, but they can't do it. It's past that point. So they're going to put it in reserve and use it for propaganda or maybe something else later. We'll see. A British offensive. They can hit Berlin, and the Americans will tag along and provide armor superiority. And probably air superiority here as well with the Brits. So 2d6 plus 2 for the air battle for the British. Oh, that's only a four. The Germans are defending at 2d6. That's a six. Oh, damn. Oh, snap. The Brits will take the loss and keep their air unit present. Uh, and then that way there's no air superiority for the Germans. So instead, it's 2d6 for the American British force and 1d6 for the Germans. 2d6 plus two for the American British. That's a five. 1d6 for the Germans is a two. Two losses means that they take one of those losses and they retreat to avoid the other one. Well, shit. That was a British offensive, so the British are actually the ones that put a cube in there. Two cubes in there. And that means the Americans, I'm sorry, the Germans have to suffer two stability tests. One, two, both passed. So now the real question, do the Americans and the British stay in Berlin or do they retreat to the Ruhr? That's a dangerous game. I think the British will stay in Berlin. The Americans will stay in the Ruhr because no matter which way you slice it, they're going to give away armor superiority to the Soviets should the Soviets decide to attack. But the Soviets don't have any flags. The Soviets can't attack, which means we can keep them both in the coast, or no, we'll keep them separated a little bit. And in fact, that's not a basically to prevent a German counterattack. We don't want them to get Berlin or the Ruhr back. It's more important that we keep that from happening than that we keep the uh, the than that we have the ability to attack with both of them. We only need to attack with one in the future. So that was the full offensive. Next out of the cup. Oh wait, before we pull that, do the Germans want to interrupt? Yes, they want to interrupt and do a deployment. Because they need to get both of these units together. Um, 2d6. All right, that's the maneuvers check successful. They're going to deploy over here. Or, you know what, same thing as last time. Just build a unit. So put that to available, put this here. That's what they did. Okay, next out of the cup. An American offensive. An American offensive is going to hit, fully augmented is going to hit Bavaria. That's probably the strongest play. But you know what that would do? That would mean when Germany surrenders, there's a tie. Because the British will have two cubes in Germany, the Americans will have two cubes in Germany, and the Soviets will have two cubes in Germany. Ideally, the British would take Bavaria so that they would gain... control? I don't know. Maybe they wouldn't gain control. doesn't matter. Let's hit it. So, full of augmented offensive... Uh, the Germans do have air, but so do the Americans. They have the British air coming in from the Ruhr. So that's 2d6 plus 2 for the Americans is a uh, 8. And a 4 for the Germans. That's two losses. 1, 2. Bad news for Germany here. Probably they're going down. 3d6 plus 2. <laughs> that's a 9. 2d6 plus 1 is a 5. The, they, they retreat, but they lose Bavaria to the Americans, which means they force to surrender. The Germans have lost all of their home areas. 
They held on an extraordinarily long time, but not getting the Berlin resource this past turn is really what doomed them. They lost two offensive markers and or an offensive and three builds that time. Uh, so this is now going to surrender procedure. Each enemy power gains a flag. The Soviets gain a flag, which the Americans are very concerned about. Uh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. We were hoping they wouldn't be able to declare war on us. Uh, allies with land units and powers controlled areas. Uh, that's zero. There are no Italian forces in a German controlled area. Um, or air naval units and areas with the powers bases making control of those areas. Nope, none of that is true. Powers allies must now conduct a stability test. Oh no, Italy. Oh no, Italy. That's bad news for Italy. Stability test. Oh, they're collapsing. Oh, no, that's bad, too. We're going to get to that in a second. The, now Japan must conduct a stability test as well, because they are all allied. Japan also loses its stability test. So uh, Germany now breaks its alliance, because, you know, they're, you know, surrendering. Remove powers, counters, and cubes from the game, including base markers and counters, and the action cup victory marker stays on the victory point track. So... All of these cubes in Paris go away, and we have to replace those all with white neutral cubes. Because that's something that was clarified by the, um, by the designer. If you have areas controlled, uh, surrendered air power controlled by uh, somebody that is surrendering, um, then that's a problem. Okay. So, uh, those are still counting negative for the democracies now. Don't don't forget that. But these also go away. So those become neutral countries. Uh, Benelux, Sweden, Finland, all neutral countries. And even the China one is gone. So Germany is now worth negative one, two, three, four, five, six for the fascists. Uh, Germany went from plus eight to minus six. And that means the fascists are at a very different level now. But we'll do that in just a second. So remove their counters and cubes from the game. So that also goes to there, there, there. Uh, we don't have... This can go to the counter mix because we don't need it anymore. And they move these things. Gone, gone. All right. I think that's all the German stuff on the map. So now we go to place neutral cubes in each power's home area or colony area not controlled by another power. That's already been taken care of. Area is now uncontrolled country, subject to place unknown base markers. No. Units that can no longer legally occupy the affected area must immediately retreat. No. Flip surrendered power stability marker to surrender. Opposing ideology with the most cubes in home areas of surrender power moves surrendered marker to the circle on its political display. Huh. Interesting. So can we duplicate this German surrender marker? Because both the democracies and the fascists get credit for surrender, forcing the Germans to surrender. I'm going to put it in the center here so that we can see. Um, interesting. Very. Oh, no, wait a minute. The ideology with the most cubes. That's the Americans and the British combined. So they definitely get the surrender marker. That's fixed. Okay. And now uh, we continue... The game. Um, each enemy power gains a flag. I didn't give that to the British or the Americans. I know I was missing something. The Soviets gained a flag, but the British and Americans did not. Okay. Uh, there we go. Germany has surrendered. Let's recalculate the victory points. Give me one second. All right. The brand new total is fascists, six, communists, six, democracy, zero. Pretty close overall. Um, and I need to determine regrouping here. I think the Americans are regrouping to the Ruhr, and the British air is regrouping to you know what? They're all regrouping to Berlin. No, no, that's a dangerous game. Let's let's regroup to the Ruhr with the American armor, just in case the Soviets try to cut us off again. Uh, if we can take back the Benelux in Paris, then we're in good shape for that. But <clears throat> for now, we will uh, continue to look at what comes next out of the cup. Well, first, the Soviets may use their flag. Oops. The Soviets may use their flag 
To do what? Do they want to declare war on the Americans now while they're weak, while they have armor superiority? And they get the Ruhr and maybe Berlin as part of the package? I think they need to. I think they need to. Soviets are going to attempt to declare war, but they need a six. They got it! They got it! They need the six because they're still at military purges, but they got it. So now, uh... Oh, crap. You know what? There were a lot of flags going back and forth here between the Americans and the Soviets that I didn't process because I forgot that even though everybody's at war except the American, British, and the Soviets. Um, so they're all supposed to have more flags. Let's put them in the cup and just pretend. like Because they gain stuff and then they gain stuff. Um, yeah. Let's put a couple of Soviet flags in the cup, too, because as the Americans gained and lost and gained and lost in Berlin, the Soviets should have been provoked by those losses and gains when they were done in territory adjacent to them, right? So probably we're more closely uh, representing things here. All right. Uh, so, but <laughs> what we've just done is the Soviets decided to de declare Operation Unthinkable from their own side. Oops, wrong one. And now the Americans and the British and the Soviets are at war. And as part of that, the Soviets must declare an immediate attack, and they're going to do it in the Ruhr. The British will come in to support, and we've got 2d6 versus 2d6 for air. Oh no, that's two for the Soviets and two for the Americans. Wow, it could have been real bad for them. But they get air superiority here and armor superiority. 3d6 versus 1d6. That's a 4 to a 2. <gasps> oh, no. 4 to a 2 is two losses. And you know what? Denmark is, should be under British control, I believe, here. I missed that cube, and therefore I missed the Amer The democracies are actually at 1. Um, so, unfortunately, that's one loss, two losses, and the Soviets gain control of the Ruhr near to the end of the turn. We are actually at sudden death here with the three crisis markers out. How close are we, though? Oops. Those didn't get actually dropped in the cup. That's interesting. Uh, we're not near the end yet. Nope, there's still a lot of stuff and a bunch of German stuff in there that needs to come out and get thrown away. All right, but the Soviets are now falling back to Silesia because they, just like the Americans, don't want to get caught off of supply. So, but the Americans fell back here. The British are now out of supply. Let's remember that. They, can, they can't trace into the Ruhr. The, that means the Americans lost one. The Soviets gained one. Oops, too much, too much. All right. So, the other thing that happened is the Americans or the British gained some flags, and they, we gave them that. They've got them all. And now they could use them, and they are going to use them. The Americans will use them to do propaganda, which is definitely successful with all these extra cubes here and their stability is increased. Okay, and then the British can't interrupt, so we go to the cup. Another American flag. Huh. What do we do with that? What do we do with that? We could try to get a build. I mean, I think we want to hold on to at least one flag going into next turn, but really we should do something with it. I think we're going to do a build. We're going to try for maneuvers here. Because now we're in a land battle with the Soviets, right? And what would we need? Would we need another logistics base down in the Pacific to try to help there? I mean, what are we going to gain by getting over here? It's only going to reduce the fascist VP. But I don't know that they need to reduce the fascist VP right here. We could take Austria. I don't know. It's hard to justify the Pacific now just because it's so far to get to where we need to go. Although not really. Not really. It's like two attacks right now. We, we knock out the New Hebrides blockade, take the base, grab the Bismarck Sea, and then... No, it's still so many attacks to get to Tokyo and get some VP from that side. Because they need to beat the Soviets. They need to take stuff from the Soviets if they're going to do it. And maybe take some of these back in, in France. Those would be easy because there's no defenders and it's all open terrain. So the Americans definitely want to try to get some guys out. So maneuvers is a successful check. We'll use it to build an infantry unit. Right? Get that on the board. Use it to try to take back some of France if we can build an army around it. Okay. 
that could be the end of the game, but I'm pretty sure we've got at least four... Yep, there's four American things in there for sure. So we keep going. An American Air. That'll go to Denmark, because we need it. And next out, an American Infantry. We'll also go to Denmark, because we need it. We could put it to New Guinea, but I don't think we need it anymore. Actually, we can't put it to New Guinea. We still haven't blocked, taken rid of that blockade. Okay, uh, next out of the cup, a British flag. We're going to use that for stability for the Brits. Successful. So now we don't have to worry about the final home front, unless we get a disaster. All right, the American home front's still in there, actually. Um, the Americans can't interrupt. The Soviets are interrupting. Hmm, they're going to attack Berlin. They're going to attack Berlin because they want that extra resource for the end of the turn. All right, so going in, going in. Also, the two victory points can't hurt. So we're going to do this with a plus one augmentation. Not a plus two, just a plus one. All right, and that is going to be three dice plus one is a seven versus one die minus one, which is a one. That's a massive disaster for the British. So now they have to suffer a stability test, but they pass it. Their cubes go away. We gain Soviet cubes in Berlin. And the Soviets retreat back to Silesia. Or they could regroup to the Ruhr. That's exactly where they're going to go. They're going to leave their air in Berlin, just in case they do something sneaky here. Uh, but they're going to leave their army in the Ruhr. Hmm. Yes. No, they're going to put the air in the Ruhr, too. And then they're going to attack Bavaria with their... Uh, remaining augmented, uh, non-augmented attack. So 3d6 versus 1d6 plus 1. They win. So the Americans lose another cube here. So we didn't do this. Americans lose 1, British lose 2, and that means the democracies lose 3. 1, 2, 3, just like that. They're way back on the ropes. The Soviets gain 1, 2... Uh, how many are they going to be at now? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9... 10. Yeah, they're at 10. Things are looking real good for the Soviets right now. They've got a solid stability. They have the ability to grab Manchuria if they get one more offensive this turn. They wanted the Ruhr, though. That was more valuable, so they grabbed that. And they're looking real good on victory points. All right, so that was their full offensive. The Americans or the British could interrupt. I think the British are going to hold on to their flag, so the Americans can interrupt and put a unit in what? Where's this guy go? I guess he goes into Norway and just acts as more backup into Europe. Like, that's what we need. We need Germany to be ours. We need to fight the Soviets on their front. Oh, you know what? Archangel is gone too, by the way. Goodbye. That gives us... I mean, the Soviets, I've been calculating. I forgot about Archangel, but now it's correct. Because Archangel isn't actually controlled by the Germans anymore. <sighs> I mean, the Americans could go through Sweden into Finland and start hitting the Soviets where it hurts. So yeah, we'll leave that extra unit in Norway. All right, next out of the cup. Oh, could the crisis now be at an end? One, two Soviet, three Soviet. That is not enough. British, British, British. Is there one more British? No. American, American, American. I think this is the end. The Germans are ignored. Yeah. You need four things to continue when you're at total war, and everybody's at total war except the Italians. So, buttons. Yep, it looks like Soviet offensive is not enough with the two Soviet flags. It's so much easier when you're doing this in the physical version, by the way. All right, so that is the end of the turn. Soviets get to keep a flag. British keep a flag for next turn. Germans, uh, that's removed from the game. Soviets get a flag. Italians get an army. That would have been nice if that came out. Soviets, Britain, Germans are out of the game. Germans are out of the game. American home front has to be resolved. Um, and in fact, I think there's multiple home fronts in here. And they have to be resolved in increasing effectiveness order for what that's worth. Let's put another air here because we have two airs down in there where we're on another attack. 
Um, so what are the other home fronts we have to resolve all at the same time? We'll do it in increasing effectiveness order as the rules stipulate, but also the American army upgrade goes into reserve, the British flag goes into, oops, not in there, goes into, uh, not reserve, but the production holding box, rather. So does this flag as part of the end turn process. Uh, the British air never got an upgrade, but now they have no British air to upgrade, so that's going to be problematic next turn. Another American air goes over in the production holding box. Did I take the air out and put it in Denmark? I think I did just a moment ago, right? That was weird. That shouldn't have happened. Let me double check. Yeah, I definitely did that. I should not have done that. Uh, so let's do this properly. The air goes into the American hold holding box because I need to not be an idiot. The British goes into their holding box. Uh, and then the next things, the German home front is removed from the game. I'll put it over here for now. Soviet home front has to be resolved. American tank goes in the holding box. Soviet holding box. All right, so I got all that resulted. Now we need to do the Soviet home front first. Here's their stability test with a minus two, means they lose one level of stability. And then we do their maneuvers. This is actually very good for them. Um... I wonder what happens if you pick up this fortress and put it in the cup. Let's see the timing on this. You resolve home front markers, and then you place markers from the cup. Yeah, so they can pick up this fortress and technically put it in the cup, which results in it going on the production holding box. They could do the same thing on the Baltic, uh, the Baltic uh, States one because they want to move those to someplace more valuable. They do want Manchuria. Well, actually, you know what? Now that I'm thinking about it, how valuable is Manchuria? Wouldn't it be more valuable to grab a bunch of Chinese areas? Let's put these guys... Oh, in Mongolia, we can't trace supply through there. <sighs> Let's do this. We're going to be defensive on this front anyway. So we'll switch these guys around. That way this tank army can be more successful in picking up. You know what? Resources aren't important in the Caucasus anymore, are they? No, they're not important at all. We just want to get as many victory points as possible. But if we get into Turkey, we could then grab Iraq, Syria, Jordan, and all of those are very easy to get with this tank army. So we will keep the tank army in the Caucasus. Maybe do one offensive into Turkey with a double augmentation in the hopes of... Uh, getting access to easy victory points with other other offensives. We wouldn't need to augment these attacks. That's why it's very attractive. We could get one offensive and attack all three of these areas and get, pick up three victory points with a single offensive. That's very, very, very good. Um, where do they want to move all their other stuff? I think they want their Leningrad fortress also going in the cup so that they can maybe remove it to Moscow. They see the northern attack as a possibility also. Hmm. Yeah, they're going to do that too. That gives them more flexibility next turn on when where those go when they come out of the cup. Better defensive options later when the Americans are on the offensive. Okay. Now, what do they do with this? They definitely want some air over there. We're going to take the extra air from Siberia and bring it into the Ruhr. And I actually just want some extra forces over here too to defend if we attack into other areas. We don't want the Italians trying to take back Bavaria. I think we're just going to keep an infantry army in Berlin until we get a fortress that can get put down there. Romania is still defended by some good forces that can take Hungary easily, can now take these other forces from the fascist air armies, um, areas that are undefended. Another good option there. Now, you know, Hungary is the only easy one, but still. <sighs> yeah, that's probably for the best. The Soviets still have some armies they need to build up this turn. I thought they had completely filled their force pool out, but then they lost some. All right. So that is their home front completed. The Americans now have a home front, and they fail theirs, but not too badly. And then they get to maneuver things around. I think the Solomon Sea guy 
isn't needed here anymore. He can go to New Guinea. Now, he's still, you know, not great because he's at minus one, but the air units are not at limited combat, I don't think, because supporting units never have to trace supply. So the air combat is never at limited minus one, which is weird, right? Isn't that a weird consequence? Anyway. That allows them to have a second air unit support, just in case. Okay. Then I don't want to move anything else. Nothing else to move for the Americans. Okay, so that's it. So we're done. We put all this crazy nonsense back in the cup. Sudden death turn is over. The Americans get this, and they get the A-bomb into their available markers box. They can now build that next turn and try to use it to drop a bomb on somebody. We're going to have to see how that works next time. The Civil War Resolution marker also goes into the cup. And we move on to the final turn of the game, which is... Ugh, I mean, it's 10 to negative 3 to 6. The fascists are definitely poised to lose a few more VP, but the Americans and the British, they absolutely need to get their stuff together. The Italians blocking the British is still killing them. And the Soviets just picked up a ton of ton of points. They're now going to get one, two, three, four, five. Five war offensives. That's as much as the British and the Americans put together. They're then going to be able to collect one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's the... Ma nope, they can't get Manchuria. They're going to collect seven resources. The Americans and British combined are going to collect nine. If the Americans could have broken this blockade... No, they still couldn't get Java. The, the Japanese, finally, are going to collect three again. That's good for them, but that's not really enough. We'll see. We'll see how things go. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll pick this up again in the near future.